I think glyphosate will never work for humans or anything around humans. What they usually do is they'll change the whole formula up a little bit. It'll still be glyphosate, but they might call it Sate for Glypha. <laughs> and they'll change the patent name. They'll put trees or something green on there and tell you that it's environmentally safe. And it'll be the exact same juice. Hello, Lee. Uh, Hello. Jensen, uh, welcome to the European Parliament and welcome with us. A few years ago, we were really worried uh, for you and, and how uh, sick you were. Um, and yet you're here and you are in good shape now with us. Can you tell us a bit how you feel and, and what happened? I feel pretty good right now because of the um, treatments that I take every two weeks. So every other week I have... a. Uh, like a two hour chemo session where I get chemo um, intravenously. Um, so I feel really good that that has been going on for at least about a year and a half and the treatments have been going very well without many side effects and without um, many complications. And it's just working to keep, keep the cancer under control. So I'm, I had a good ride. I don't know what I call it. I'm having a good ride right now. <laughs> it's ups and downs of a year. It could be worse. I've seen really hard times with this cancer. So I can't complain right now. Even with the little problems I have right now, it doesn't compare to what I've seen. Did you get any support? All the time, but usually, you know, just my family. And just, I have a really good uh, doctor right now that found a really good regimen um uh, one of the better ones that I ever had as far as since I had this cancer that works and it's been working for a good long time. So you're lucky somehow. Somehow, all the time, yeah, I get lucky. We're in Europe um, and we're discussing about glyphosate, whether we should forbid it or not. We don't really know how this will be going. Did something happen in the U.S. except from like these big uh, fines that were given to, to Monsanto? Is the discussion rising about forbidding pesticides, especially glyphosate? It's always been a discussion in California, especially ever since the case happened. But we've actually had um, Hawaii to ban, you know, using it on school grounds in certain areas. There's certain other countries and states that have stopped using it. We've had a lot of progress as far as people understanding that it's something that they need to look further into, even if people are still using it or not using it. It's definitely a big discussion that's still going on, I think. Well, here we have witnessed um, an explosion of cancers, but also other sickness, uh, for instance, Parkinson, uh, due to, to pesticide exposure. Um, but we still don't move so much. We're taking a lot of time before realizing, um, oh, this product is quite toxic and we, we should get out of it. What I used to hear a lot when I first got sick, when I used to talk to the doctors and ask them, well, where do you think I got this from? Because I'm not a typical patient for even a basic skin cancer, you know what I mean? So it was a shock for me to have a skin cancer like this. So they didn't have any answer. So when I asked them about me being exposed to this chemical, they said, yeah, we heard of that, but we don't have any scientific evidence to back it How up. How did the idea come to your mind that it might be about because of pesticides? It wasn't really an idea that came to my mind. It was because of the internet. I was just searching around for things as I was without a job. I was at home and I was getting sicker and more and more sick. So um, I was just looking around for things. And that's when I found a Miller firm. And they basically were saying, if you think that you've been exposed to this product or these chemicals, to get in contact with them. That's all I did. And then doctors told you, we have no means to prove it. All the time, yeah, all the time. And that was the hard part, right, to connect your diseases in front of the tribunals? Not really, because I really had really good skin and I really didn't do a lot of things that would harm my skin. So I was able to pinpoint the certain things that I was doing or events in my life that brought it all back to that situation. Mm -hmm. And then once finding out that other people had been exposed, sick, and even died, then, you know, it was just pretty much easy from there. You might have heard about Paul Francois, this French guy. Um, he was a farmer and he was exposed to pesticides as well. Um, and he got sick 
and he had a lawsuit just like you, which ended up just a few months ago. Um, but the fine that um, was asked from Monsanto was to 10,000 euros, which barely covers the medical costs that he had. Right. I mean, even in the French system where you have quite good access to, to medicine, it's really ridiculous somehow. So you say Monsanto is responsible for it, is guilty, but at the same time you give them a free pass, you know? Yeah, I, I don't understand, you know, the different numbers, you know, and how people are paid out. But like, even with my case, you know, it started out as a $289 million case. But it got reduced to smaller amounts because, you know, one of the things that they said is, you know, if he's going to die, why don't we give him all that money? He doesn't need that money. He's going to be dead soon. Really? They used that argument in the court. Those are real words. You can look it up in the court. Yeah. Come so, on. yeah, it was like, if he's going to die, you know, no regards for my family and nothing for my kids or wife, just he's dying. So he doesn't need that money. Even the law, you know, has gotten the way of what, how much money would be dispersed. So at some point of your, well, battle, struggle, um, did you feel threatened by Monsanto or people that you could associate with Monsanto? I was encouraged to not, by my friends and people that had heard of this or knew something about Monsanto or anything before I did, I was encouraged to not try to sue Monsanto or have a lawsuit against Monsanto. Because it was too big? That's what it's people too told big. you? And it's also, you know, people say there's some kind of political connections and then this and that. So it was a big deal to go do it, but I had no choice because I had lost my job behind this whole situation. I just had to do what I could because I had no choice because I was really sick at that time. Your fight was really about um, getting justice and somehow reparation for your sickness. What do you think about ecosystems not being able to ask for reparation because they're also sick, you know, because of, of glyphosate and, and other products? What it's doing to the soil is probably the worst thing, you know, because that's definitely irreparable. So without new soil there, that soil will be useless. I don't know, I think people just need to be educated that there's other ways to do it other than spraying pesticides or herbicides on there. I don't know if you heard about ecocide and Monsanto was trialed in a mock trial a few years ago in 2017 and they were convicted, fakely then, uh, but still with real judges uh, for ecocide, which means the gravest crimes against the planet that also puts in danger the survival of humanity. What do you think about it? Do, should, do you think it should be a crime? I think they have enough information now that if they put warning labels on there, then it takes their chemical to a different level. So when those become regulated, you have to have a license to use it. And you wouldn't see it on the shelves because it would be something you have to be licensed to go get, like I'm a licensed applicator. You'd have to have that to go in there and buy it. So you wouldn't see it on the shelves. Mm. So that's probably one of the first things that needs to happen if they don't want to change the label because then they become responsible for people getting sick if they change that label and they say this can make you sick mm -hmm. so you'll never see their label change what they usually do is they'll change the whole formula up a little bit it'll still be glyphosate but they might call it safe for glypha <laughs> and they'll change the patent name yeah. and they'll give it to you in a different bottle and They'll put trees or something green on there and tell you that it's environmentally safe. And it'll be the exact same juice, but they'll change the label. Mm. So, no, I, I think it should be regulated and they should get in trouble when they are killing off fisheries and things that people are finding out from the leaching and the dripping that you can't control certain damage that it's doing. Mm. So they should be held accountable. <laughs> So you're here with us in Europe also to help us sensibilize about those products. Um, how is it going in the U.S.? Are you working with communities? Do you think that there is a dynamic growing up following your your lead? Or I've always done something with this ever since it happened. You know, ever since the court case happened, I've always been involved with different groups and different things. Like there's a guy named Tony Thurman who works for the government, the local school government in California. Um, we're trying to write him and harass him a little bit to just get it out of the schools the same way we did in Hawaii. So it basically just takes a lot of that, a lot of people signing papers and a lot of groups coming together 
to to push for different you know changes but in california like we have a lot of things like epa we have the just the local people riding around in small trucks making sure things are not you know getting out of hand and so it's a lot of regulation and a lot of people controlling what happens with chemicals and in, the, in California and the whole United States, but it's not like where it should be. But I think it's headed that way, especially after this case. Mm-hmm. I think that they're headed to, you know, trying to use this as least as amount of chemicals as possible. Monsanto was bought by Bayer, which is a European company now, a German company. Um, they have a general assembly in a few weeks from now. Um, would you have a message for them? I've never spoken about Bear or Monsanto in um, interviews on purpose. I mean, I, yeah, I really don't know what I would say to them other than, you know, if they know that this stuff is not good for people, then definitely don't give it to people. The way that you're giving it to them and saying that it's safe enough to drink and the commercials with people out with their shorts and you know, sandals on, having a good time, spraying chemicals. And it's just its just not the way it's done in the industry that I learned. And they told you to always wear, you know, protective gear and, and realize this stuff is serious. And just even approaching the mixture before you put water and all there, mm-hmm. you need to make sure that you're wearing the right stuff and treating it like it's a, a serious chemical because it can hurt you. Well, that's quite clear already, I think. <laughs> Um, and then my last question would be, and what about the European Union? Wh- which message do you come here to, to convey to us? I think it's not to convey to like the people, but maybe to the higher ups to, you know, like, again, like we did in Hawaii, to talk to them about what you can do for everybody around, you know, especially the kids and especially the schools and the common areas and the parks and whatever else. I think it's a different story for the farms and the um, people that live out in more rural areas you know what i mean i think it's a different thing that they need to look into that but definitely around people and around you know common areas where people are milling at i don't i just yeah in schools and parks and beaches cemeteries i don't think it should be used at all because you just never know you know it's one of the ladies named mckenzie that's been following this case you know her volleyball team was practicing in a field next to grass that was sprayed with this chemical And, you know, if the ball gets in there or if you go in there to get the ball and shorts on or it's different because now you're getting yourself exposed, you know. So we just have to put signs out. We have to put warnings out that we were spraying because, you know, it doesn't just go away. You know, you you can expose people if they go in there at a certain time after you apply without leaving a short amount of time for people to not go in there and leave it to where it can get to where it needs to stay at. I think glyphosate will never work for humans or anything around humans or anything that can leach into where animals or fish or something like that are. I think that alternative methods have to come into play. If you have an acidic liquid that has acid in there, if it's just lemon juice, if it's just old lemon pills, smashed up into some water with maybe a little salt you know that's a good chemical it probably could burn our skin but it definitely would kill weeds the same way that roundup does you just want to make the weed dry so you can come along and brush the top off right so yeah acid kills weeds so you don't really need a chemical like glyphosate when you can make a natural acidic liquid from lemons or other things like that. I've seen it done. You know, people have already doing this. So that might become a thing now. It's as short as in lemons because we're spraying all the weeds with lemons. But I think you can have more lemons than glyphosate and it'll be a lot safer. So it's just a safer thing, you know. No matter how they say it's safe or whatever, it's still a chemical. Anything with says side is meant to kill. So there's no such thing as a safe pesticide because it's meant to kill. Well, thank you. Is there anything you'd like to to add? No, thanks for having me. Well, thank you and and all our support also in your journey. Thank you. We hope the best for you. All right. Thanks.